why a child is developing a malocclusion. And that's a big question for us in dentistry. And normally, we start saying, oh no, this is genetics. Because the, the mom has the problem or the dad has the problem, so this is going to be genetics. So I ask you, for example, these are sisters. I call these the three sisters, but you are going to see only two because the older one didn't permit me to photograph, right? But if you see the sisters, they came as an immigrant here. And if you see the, the older one, she has a perfect occlusion. She's developing between normal limits. But if you see the younger one, she's already with lack of space for the canines, and she has a malocclusion. If everything is genetics, they should be the same. They should present the same occlusion. And if you see her lower face is a good development here, you can see that redu reduction of the lower face in, this, in the younger child. So we are getting problems in this child. When I investigate a little bit more with them, she was keeping the home diet, which was the home country diet. She loves all the junk food. <laughs> and that is the reason. And if it is genetics, I will ask you, why these twins, he has a cross bite, she has a deep bite and this occlusion. If everything is genetics, they should be the same. And even more in them, because they are twins. They should express in the same way. So to understand that, what is the situation, we need to understand how is the normal craniofacial growth and development through our life, since we were born and then until we become an adult. And this is a process of about 18 to 25 years. And during this time, we are influenced by the environment. And the environment is leading with the genetics, all the development, that is differentiation of the tissues, all the growth, that is the increase in the size and chain of the shape, and how we adapt through plasticity. So all these processes are happening during the craniofacial growth and development. And yes, they are driven by genetics. By genetics is expressed depending on the environment. So that is what we call today epigenetics. Epigenetics is the science to study how the environment change the expression of the genes. So we can modify our genetic expression. So it means that because the mom is a class two, not necessarily the child has to be class two. If the mom is a class three or the dad is a class three, not necessarily the child is going to be a class three. If we change the environment, we are going to change the expression of the genes, and the things can reverse. And you are making that through your life, but we don't apply that to the craniofacial complex. For example, if you start going today to the gym, you change the shape of your body, because your genes make a different expression influenced by the environment because now you are working out. And you can make your bones bigger and stronger if you work out every single day. You are changing the environment, so you are changing the expression of the genes. So it is possible in the maxillaries as well, but we need to change. What happened? If I need to change something in a child, I need to involve the parents. Because if the parents like to eat pizza, hot dogs, and hamburgers every single day, I cannot ask the child to eat vegetables, meat, and fruits. 
I cannot change the diet of the child. And I finished recently on a study, I don't have time to show today, but the harder the diet, the stronger the mandible is, and the bigger the mandible is. So everything started here, the day that we were born. And what happened? The day that we were born, our mom decided if she was going to breastfeed us or if she was going to use the bottle. And today we have a lot of babies with the bottle. And whenever we are feeding a child with the bottle, we are not creating a correct lip sealing. With the bottle, what happens is that mandible is dropping down because of gravity. The patient is basically, the child is basically using the cheeks to suck from the nipple instead of using the whole muscles, the whole masticatory muscles and the whole facial muscles. And we are not producing a lip seal. Then when the breastfeeding is correct, the child is able to breathe through the nose. This is something very important when we are breastfeeding because the child should be able to suck from the mom, mom's breast but also to breathe through the nose. If the child is laying down, basically he is breathing from the, through the nose, but also through the mouth, and we have a mouth breather. And the child is not holding the nipple with the tongue, because to milk the breast, the child has to push the nipple against the palate. And at this moment, the child is learning how to put the tongue on the palate, the physiological position of the tongue. And then, if I have this situation, the tongue is dropping down and staying on the mandible. What are you seeing today with the, with the children? No lip seals. They are with the mouth open all the time. They are breathing through the mouth. They don't put the tongue on the palate. And they have narrow dental arches. Because when you put the tongue on the palate, you are pushing the developing of the maxilla. And when you are developing of the, the maxilla, you are permitting the mandible to sit into the maxilla and to follow that growing. So the beginning is right here, when the child was born. And when is the time that we are growing more? over our first year of life. Remember those who are parents, during the first months of life, you are buying clothes every single week. Because the next week, you, you bought something today, and tomorrow is not good for him again anymore. Because the child is growing a lot. And it's happening in the whole body, also in the head. So we need to produce the correct stimulus at this age. And this is a very interesting study because one of the problems is that we are not stimulating the child at the first day to do breastfeeding. And the problem is that we are separating the child from the mom, the newborn from the mom. We are keeping the baby away for a long period and then we are asking the mom to try breastfeeding a couple of hours later that is too long for the baby. And it's a natural instinct, the breastfeeding. This is a study that was made in Belarusia. And what they did was use having the baby, the newborn, cleaning the baby on the top of the mom, doing everything on the top of the mom. The child was not separated from the mom. Another group of child, they did in the traditional way. They separated from the mom. And you can see that the babies that were not separated from the mom, they naturally start crawling up and look, looking for the source of feeding. So we are programmed to come and breastfeed. <laughs> The child that was separated from the mom, I can leave this video running the whole night. That child is not going to come to the breast.
So we are cutting the natural instinct just from the very beginning. So we need to practice more. This child could learn how to grab the nipple, how to, to milk the breast, but we need to train the mom and the child. We need to work more with them. But what happened? <laughs> Everyone is in a rush. They don't want to, to expend too much time with the mom. We need to rush out everyone from the room, and we are dedicating the time to train the child for breastfeeding, right? So this is the natural position that we should be breastfeeding the child. The, the child shouldn't be laying down. The child should be sitting on the mom's lap. So in that way, the head is vertical and the child is able to milk the breast and at the same time to breathe through the nose. And what is that important? Because when we are in that position, the lower jaw, the mandible, is start moving forward and backward. And that is going to stimulate the mandibular condyle that is one of the growing centers in the mandible. So think about this. Have you seen a newborn with a mandibular protrusion? If you start looking at all the newborns, they are with the mandible retruded. All the newborns have a convex profile because the mandible is small. The mandible have the size only to survive. And through this exercise, the mandible is going to grow and to catch up to the growth of the maxilla and then to continue growing in the right position. So if we are not doing a correct breastfeeding, we are missing that important time for the mandibular growth. And that's why we are getting more and more malocclusions today. Another problem is tongue tie. A lot of newborns, they have a very strong tongue frenum or a very strong lip frenum. And we, as a dentist, we can help a lot because a lot of moms, they, cannot, they are trying to breastfeed the child, but the child is impossible for him or for her. And it's because the tongue cannot go to the palate and cannot milk the nipple, cannot pressure the nipple to produce the milk. So we can help, and it's very easy to cut that free moon in a newborn. It's, it's a, seconds we don't have to deliver anesthesia. We don't have to put local anesthesia because this is a ligament. And in the ligaments, we don't have nerve endings. So we don't produce pain there. So we can cut very easy there that frenum, and you may see how the child start breastfeeding with no problem. So this is a very good web page if you want to read a little bit about tongue tie and upper lip tie. But this is something that we can help a lot to the child when, when it's impossible to breastfeeding.